at uh, Georgia here. Williams Bryce on Saturday, 339 kick on CBS. Certainly looking forward to that. Got great respect for Coach Smart and his staff and almost those guys, and they do a fantastic job. They got a really good football team with a bunch of good players, a bunch of guys that played for a national championship last year, and that experience certainly is benefiting them uh, moving forward. Uh, so we're looking forward to it. We've got a good start today in practice. Uh, we need to finish the week in our preparation for, for a very good Georgia football team. Uh, I would go over their uh, depth chart and all, but they didn't send us one, so, so I guess I can cover if you guys ask me questions. Um, injury report, KC Crosby's good to go. He practiced today. Uh, DJ Warren did not practice today, but I expect him to practice tomorrow. Chavis Dawkins is probably questionable, but I would say more doubtful. And uh, Mon Denson will play. So that, that's it. I'll open up for any questions. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone. David, the first Will, looking back at last year when Fromm threw the ball, uh, he did take some downfield shots, but a lot of times he worked the edges. How difficult is that as a defensive back to play, uh, especially on some of those shorter routes where he's getting rid of the ball pretty quick? Well, most of them are RPOs, and they do a really good job. They're very effective in last year's game with that. They've got some really good space players, and you talk about Terry Godwin, Miko Hardman, Crumpton. I mean, they've got some really, really fast guys. And the one thing that I would say, one of the many good things would jump out at me as their team speed overall, not just skill-wise offensive, but defensively, and it really shows up on special teams. So, um, but most of those were very accurate with the ball, you know, and, and I don't know that Jake totally gets the credit he deserves. You know, I watched a guy in the, in the college football playoff against Oklahoma, you know, made some big time throws in that game. Some longer throws down the field, the field out, the field corner, uh, the digs across the middle, the high-low concepts, I mean, and then against Alabama in the championship game, put them in a position to win the game. So uh, he's very accurate with the football and, and speaks for itself what he did as a true freshman. Way in the back, Mike. Well, you said this offseason that you grew up watching, you know, SEC football games on Jefferson Pilot, and you've watched the game of the week. Does this seem like one of those games to you, trying to take yourself out of it? And <coughs> what is your earliest memory of the Carolina Georgia game? Um, I would have a hard time going back. Most of the games were at night, and, and South Carolina wasn't in the SEC at that time. I remember James Jackson laying the ball on the ground at williams Bryce Stadium. All right, I, uh, uh, and Georgia ended up winning the game. I think it was James. I'm, I, can't, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but most of those games were at night. I actually, I think I attended a couple of the games uh, at Sanford Stadium. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's been, a, a, you know, obviously a, a great rivalry through the years. Expect another outstanding game on Saturday. Colin right. Georgia won that game pretty handily Saturday, too. How much can you learn about a team rewatching film from a game where they went by, I guess, what, 45 points? Well, just different guys in different spots. I mean, I, you know, I think that we all know each other pretty well from a coordinator standpoint, from a play caller standpoint. Um, will there be some new wrinkles and some different things they've worked in the offseason? Sure, that we will, will have as well. So, um, you know, again, I think that. You know, knowing kind of their structure and our structure and how we do things, this this game has been game plan for this summer. <laughs> so it's we're just kind of brushing up the game plan this week, and I'm sure they're doing the same. Way in the back, Mike. Coach, on the other side of that, what can you guys take away after playing Coastal, going up against now a very good team, one of the best probably in the country? Well, I mean, again, I think first of all, with young players being having the opportunity to play in front of 80,000 people, I mean, that, that's that's the first big time exposure for a lot of those young men that, that, that they'll have. So that's exciting uh, for them. Um, but again, I think, you know, just gelling together, uh, making communication. I mean, those are those are things I look for. We didn't have a lot of issues, especially on the offensive side of the ball with communication. We, we we're, were very efficient. We were very effective in the things we do with new coordinator, new play caller, some new, new moving parts. Uh, and I thought, you know, in all three phases, we functioned pretty well. Will, when uh, you and Kirby were playing basketball back in the day, do you remember one uh, good pop that he gave you? Like, what's the biggest injury you ever got? I can't go into all that. <laughs> I, I can't even visit that right now. Gotcha. How much of your decision to commit more fully to tempo had to do with the, specifically with the ability to run the ball against elite defensive lines? I would say a huge part of that. You know, and you watch teams – that play with tempo and how effective they are running the football. And a lot of it has nothing to do with getting a hat on a hat in the run game. A lot of it has to do with the displacement of a defensive player, not getting a line, not having his eyes in the right spots. Um, you know, I just think it's it's so hard offensively right now, unless you're just elite from an ability.
capability standpoint to create explosive plays. In order to create some explosive plays in the past,